So me and chemistry had a love-hate relationship. Some days I felt like it clicked and other days I would question what an atom even is, to be honest. Hi everyone, welcome back, or if you're new, welcome to my channel, Raina on the Cusp. My name is Raina and I did maths, chemistry and biology A-levels back in 2017. But in this video, I'm just gonna be talking about chemistry. So if you do like it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. We actually just hit a thousand subscribers on the channel, which is unbelievable. So thank you all so, so, so much. And please comment down below to let me know what other videos you'd like to see as well. Anyways, let's get straight into my tips for A-level chemistry, which helped me to get an A-star, starting with use the specification. So I said this in my A-level biology video, but it still stands for chemistry. The specification is absolutely key to knowing what you need to learn in how much depth to learn it in, when you're going to learn it, so in year 12 or 13, and it generally just provides you with a really good structure to reference as well. If it's not on the specification, I don't think you can be tested on it, but don't hold me to that. And using it will also help you to identify teachers that may be giving you extra bits of information or if they haven't covered something yet. I did the AQA specification and this is what it looks like. I had it printed out and ready to annotate. Do take notice of the language that they use in the specifications because it's likely to get replicated on mark schemes. And if you copy directly from it, you're more likely to get this right as well. In our sixth form, whenever we got given something in class in chemistry it always had the number from the specification to refer to so we know where to find information and how it matches up. So my next tip is an organisational one and I think this kind of just really helped me to sort out my chemistry work and allow me to get a good grade. And this tip is to categorise your revision into the three sections of chemistry instead of organising it into year 12 and year 13 work. So the three sections are physical chemistry, organic chemistry and inorganic chemistry. And I will also leave on the screen what each of the three papers from AQA cover, which is really important to be aware of as well. So throughout my two years of A-levels, I had an orange folder for organic chemistry, a blue folder for physical chemistry, and a green folder for inorganic chemistry. And I would keep all of my work sorted into these so it was really easy to find something and also to identify any strengths or weaknesses I had across the three sections. So these are my folders and as you can see, they are not organized anymore because it's been a while since I did my A-levels about three years ago, but I would highly recommend keeping it organized. And to be honest, if I could have gone paperless back then, I would have with an iPad because this amount of paper for me was just too much to keep track of in the end and some of it just didn't even fit in the folder as well. So on top of the specification there are some other really useful resources that I used. I had the AQA revision guide, the CGP guide, I used different websites as well and also YouTube. I really like having textbooks to refer to because it's easy to quickly remind yourself of something and I really think you can benefit from a wide variety of different resources rather than just limiting yourself to one. I will leave a help helpful list of A-level chemistry websites in the description box down below that can help you with your revision and any exam questions. And if you also know any helpful resources, please leave them in the comments below so that everyone can benefit. Some of these websites have really helpful chemistry revision notes that you can refer to and others have exam questions, often grouped by topic as well. I found YouTube videos particularly useful when I needed something visual like learning how to set up practical equipment. Okay, so next I will probably say this in every exam or revision tips video but past papers are absolutely key to succeeding in exams especially in A-levels and especially in chemistry as well. This is because they are a window into the examiner's head and they show you exactly what you need to write to get the marks and sometimes what not to write as well. So please use past papers and don't be afraid to jump into them a little bit early, especially as there are so many to do from the old spec and the new spec. Do the old ones because they are still really good practice even if the specification is out of date. And to be honest, a lot of questions repeat year on year, so you're not losing anything by doing the old ones as well. When you're doing past papers, don't do it passively. Actually take note of what you're getting wrong and why, and maybe try and incorporate them into your flashcards so that you can learn the correct answers as well. If you've just gone over a specific topic in class, you can often find exam questions grouped into topics online. Our sixth form was actually nice enough to give us exam packs based on each of the topics so that when we felt comfortable with a certain topic, we could go away and practice the questions and consolidate the learning 
learning. It's also really good if you don't feel ready to tackle a whole past paper yet, but you want to have a go at some questions. Also, you need to understand the difference between knowledge and application questions. So knowledge questions are often just straight up facts that you just need to be able to regurgitate and they're often one to two marks and they're quite easy to get the marks on. So for example, in chemistry, this could be something like the definition of enthalpy change. Applications are a little bit more tricky because you have to apply your pre-existing knowledge to new scenarios and actually understand what's going on even if you've never seen a question like that before. However, if you have a good grounding of the specification, you can often find the relevant bits and think how it relates to the question. Also think about what the command words are in the question because they will direct what sort of response you give. On the AQA website, there's actually a section that shows you what kind of command words can come up. I also spoke about this in my biology video, but when you're doing past papers, take some time to read the examiner's report or skim it because often there are some hidden gems in there on what types of questions people did worse on and why, and how to sort of get more marks on questions. This leads me onto my next point, which are the two techniques that I implemented to do well in chemistry, which are active reading recall and spaced repetition. So active recall is basically a revision method where you actively have to retrieve information from your brain without looking at any references or any other pieces of information. So you're having to work pretty hard to find answers to questions just from your head. The way I used active recall was by doing past papers, a lot of them, and flashcards. These are the two revision aids I use the most throughout A-levels and especially in chemistry as well. And I also combined them with spaced repetition so I would repeat flashcards with increasing intervals. So for example I could do a certain topic on day one and then day three and then day seven, 14, etc, etc. And you can customise what type of interval you want. I would also recommend getting your flashcards organised throughout the year rather than leaving them because there is just so much to do towards the end. For topics like mechanisms, I would just try and do as many exam questions as possible because flashcards in my opinion didn't really work that well. Chemistry really really needs a good solid foundation in maths so you really don't want to be neglecting this part of chemistry. I think almost every topic has some sort of calculation or formula attached to it. And I also do think you can definitely build up your math skills, even if you don't do maths A level. Just make sure you use your teachers early on if you don't understand something. You can also find the mathematical requirements and examples in the spec, and this is what it looks like for AQA. And throughout the spec where it says MS, that stands for mathematical skills, and it shows you in which topics that you need some sort of mathematical skills. So for example, here for rate equations, it says that you need to be able to use a graph of concentration time and calculate the rate constant of a zero order reaction by determination of the gradient. Chemistry calculations will require a lot of practice and repetition in order to understand the concepts, but it's definitely doable and past papers are the best repeated exposure to the question types. Next, I wanna talk about chemistry experiments. In the beginning, I definitely was thinking of experiments as an afterthought. I didn't really engage with them, didn't really ask questions. However, you really do need to treat them with the same importance as the main content, especially because of paper three in the AQA spec. So in this paper it actually says 40 marks of questions are based on practical techniques and data analysis, which is a huge chunk out of the 90 marks and on paper one and two it also says the relevant practical skills are assessed. So you need to know exactly how the practicals are done, how you set up for the practicals, what happens when they don't go to plan and how to do the calculations for them as well. I would recommend keeping your lab books and experiment notes organised in a separate folder and if you don't understand a step in a practical please please ask straight away. It's so much better to clear that up in the beginning than wait till exams and realise you've got to a question that you're not sure what's going on with. Trust me I know that feeling when it's getting to lunch and you're looking at the clock and you just want to pack up your test tubes and leave but just try and tackle your problems early on. When you're doing practicals, also try and pay attention to the diagrams. Try and draw them out from memory if you can. I think I remember specific chemistry questions where you could draw out diagrams and get the marks. And if your drawings are good enough, then that's a much faster way of getting the marks as well. And if you're also more of a visual learner, it might help for you to draw things out anyway. I also have a few quick tips that I've just combined into this one section. So firstly, always have your periodic table with 
with you. I know they give you them in class usually. However, if you want to do some work in your freeze, it's just really useful to have one. Also, if you're doing AQA, check the teaching resources section on the website. They have some really useful links on there, like what sort of command words can come up, links to the practical handbooks, the practical setup guides, and there's also a table for the reactions of metal ions in aqueous solutions. So I actually have that table that our sixth form gave to us, and I believe the one on the website is blank. However, you can just print it out and colour it in yourself according to the colours of the solutions. And also you could maybe consider a chemistry glossary. So again, this is the one that our sixth form gave to us. So this is just a simple table of definitions, but this was really good for those knowledge questions that were like one to two marks. And it was really handy to be able to have these all in one place and be able to refer to them. So as you go through your lessons, you can keep track of any new words that you come across and definitions and build your own glossary as well. So if you like this video and you want more A-level or study videos in general, then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and comment down below and share any other A-level chemistry tips you have. And I will see you all again in the next video. Bye.